Uh, what do I do if I lose my way in our training? Okay. Now, the first, the first thing to say is the way to avoid losing your way in training is to have a written plan. I might mention that before, but if you have a written plan that's set out and you've got your 120 steps or whatever it is, you know where you're going. So the first thing you can do when it starts to go wrong is to go back down your shaping plan, follow five steps, find something the animal can do comfortably, and then come back up again. It's that simple. Um, really easy process. You just make it easier. What tends to happen without a plan is we go, <gasps> Oh, it's not working. What do I do? Let's try something else. Let's get some more advice. Let's go on the internet and ask on a forum. Yeah, that will do your head in. Um, you get hundreds of pieces of advice, all of this. So having a real clear plan, what your values are, what your training method is, having a shaping plan that you can work with will help prevent you from losing your way in training. But if you do, the things that I would say is first, don't just take anyone's advice okay uh, i'm sure as a group you've got lots of experience and, and donkey owners are, are much more stable at this than than uh, equine owners you know a lot of equine owners with a horse will go onto a forum and they go my horse does this what should i do um, which is one of the biggest mistakes you can make because you will get like five thousand answers that tell you to do four thousand nine hundred and ninety seven different things the advice that you want to follow if you're going to ask for advice from other people is from the people who ask you questions first. My donkey bites, what should I do? Hmm, I've no idea, but does he do it on Tuesdays? Does he do it when it's raining? Does he do it, um, have you checked that, it's in pain, uh, that he's in pain? Um, when did he start doing it? Uh, does he do it all the time? And that's the only way to really believe that somebody is gonna give you a answer that is related to the true nature of your individual animal and your situation. What tends to happen when we ask for advice is people give us their advice that worked for them in their situation with their unique donkey in their unique environment. Uh, my donkey bit me, what did I do? Oh, I told him off and I jumped up and down and I smacked him on the nose and he never did it again. So that's what you should do with your donkey. And that's logical because that's what we want human beings do. But actually, if that doesn't fit with your values, if it's not your donkey, if it's not your environment, um, that may not work for you. So look for the advice from people who ask you lots of questions first and that will be predominantly people who are using some sort of science of behavior because they will be seeking to find out what are all the answers because they know there are lots of different reasons for behavior you know uh, pain environment previous experience history all sorts of things and so until you find those things difficult to know how to move forward I would always say don't go to the problem to fix the problem if you lose your way. So let's say you want to teach your donkey to load. Don't take it to the float or to the trailer to load. Take it to the rope on the ground and the tarpaulin and the bunting and um, the shaping plan for trust, problem solving and confidence or the shaping plan for loading. If, if your donkey has a kicking issue and you want to teach it to pick up its feet, don't go to the feet to pick up to solve the problem. That is too big a step and we've talked about the size of the steps and it causes a real issue with anxiety and it's dangerous and it can make the behavior worse sometimes if you're really strong and you're really good it can, it can work and that's why it appears to work but for most of us don't go to the problem to solve the problem find a smaller step find where you can do it away from it because if you go to the trailer and you try and get that donkey on the donkey goes no i'm not going to go what are you going to do then you're either going to have to stand there for three or four hours hoping it goes on um, or you're going to use more force which frightens the donkey and then it teaches the tra that the trailer is a bad place um, or you're going to walk away realizing your mistake and the donkey goes cool so when you try and get me in the trailer and I refuse we leave and that works so you don't want to set any of those things up you want to actually say let me work with a pro program that teaches my donkey wherever I go you follow and we break down the loading into different elements so that is um, walking over things, walking over hollow things, walking between narrow things, walking under things. And then we begin to build them together. So our donkey is still nowhere near the trailer, but it's walking over obstacles that are narrow and has things above them and maybe into dark spaces. And they learn to follow you wherever you go. And then the trailer is just another obstacle. Not, let's go, we've got a load on the trailer. So 
it's important not to go to that problem to solve uh, the problem. As I mentioned, if you do get lost, just go back down your shaping plan and find an easy step, find something to reward, build it back up, have a look at, have I missed some steps and I need to just add something else in? Maybe we haven't, we haven't done a piece of training. My donkey doesn't like having his feet picked up. Mm, yeah, okay. But actually your donkey's nervous about being caught. And so by the time you catch him, he's nervous and anxious. And then you pick up his feet, it's, there's always going to be a problem. Whereas if you could fix the catching first, have him comfortable with all his body being touched, then the feet issue will be much smaller. So you've got to know you're working on the right thing. Um, ask if you can make the steps that you're taking any smaller. You know, can I, what I'm doing, I'm a bit confused, it's not working. You have to, can I, can I just make it easier? Can I go for half a step instead of one step? Can I go for two steps instead of five? Um, can I go for 10 seconds instead of 15? And it's important to check that it's not environmental that's causing that problem. So has anything changed in the environment? And that could be weather, companions, feed, um, all sorts of things will, in the environment will affect your animal's behavior and change. Is, is my mare coming into season? Um, uh, what's the age of the donkey? All of those things that will influence the behavior are important to eliminate as things that could be interfering with whatever it is that you're trying to do. So you, you really have to, when you encounter a problem, you get stuck. You have to step back and you have to begin to look at the elements that you're building. So the final piece of this, there are, there are six key things that I think, um, in my experience, if you can get right, it will improve your training by like 80%. And I'm just working on the 80-20 rule here, um, Pareto's rule where... Um, 20% of your effort, these six things, will see an 80% improvement in whatever you do, if you can master them. Don't hold me to the science. It's just a way of thinking about it, all right? It's just the fact that, for me, what I've seen is most behavioral issues, when people get lost, are down to these things. They've either misread the true um, behavior of the animal and understanding of their true nature. So um, they are not listening to that individual animal, whether... Um, it needs more time to think or it needs smaller steps or it needs actually to move on quicker because it's a more confident animal. So they're boring it by being too slow um, or they're applying a method for uh, horses to donkeys and then wondering why they're not getting the right results. So first you have to make sure that what you're doing is reaching to that animal's um, true nature and to their species abilities and behaviors. Then um, you have to communicate correctly. So this is about um, positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, punishment if you choose to use it. Uh, as a trainer, you know, I try to avoid punishment um, and I don't recommend we use punishment deliberately as training. Uh, but if you choose to, that's fine, that's your choice, but use it correctly. So all of these things have to be done with the right timing um, and being able to either reward the right behavior or to release the pressure in the, in the right place. So often my donkey doesn't lead. So people put pressure, they pull on the lead rope. There's pressure here, pressure there. The animal kind of stands, isn't moving. So they release the pressure because they want to change position or they get bored or they can't wait that long or whatever it might be. And when they release that pressure, what they've just said to the animal is standing still works. And then they pull again. The animal goes, I know what to do. If I stand still, um, then you stop pulling. So that's clearly what you want me to do. Stand still. Great. No problem. And the animal learns to stand still every time we release that pressure. It's not to do with the animal's behavior. It's not being stubborn. It's our communication that's wrong. The donkey comes up and uh, gives us a little nibble. So we put our hand on, our, on his head. We push his head away. And we think we're saying, no, let's don't do that. But the animal actually thinks, cool, I come up and give you a nibble and you give me a little bit of fuss. Yeah, but I'm telling you off. No, but to the donkey's perception is you actually were touching my head and stroking me. You're just really rubbish at giving me attention, but it was better than no attention at all. So for your donkey that wants activity, wants interaction, you could actually be rewarding it. So you have to know to be able to communicate properly. The third step is you have to be able to shape behavior effectively. So if there's a problem in, in what you're doing, maybe your steps are too big. You haven't put uh, the right shaping plan in place. Um, or you need to do several shaping plans at once. You don't have to just have one. You could be working on four or five, especially for a young animal. 
So get your shaping right, the size of the steps that you're applying. Um, the fourth uh, element would be comfort zones. So you're thinking about how you stretch the animal's comfort zones correctly uh, by asking um, and managing their, not overreaching them, not flooding them, not causing them to be terrified, but just making the size of the step and what you're asking them correctly and reading those comfort zones, which is more of a challenge for the donkey and mule. Um, the fifth uh, step um, for your donkeys um, and mules is about having a plan for problem solving, trust and confidence. Most people want the donkeys to be more confident, they want them to trust them more, and they want the donkeys to be able to solve problems in a constructive sort of way. And we hope that will just happen just because we do training and we're amazing people and we spend time with animals. My experience is the best way to achieve all of those things is to actually have a deliberate training plan that works on building your animal's confidence with you, um, that works on trust. Okay? Just for a matter of interest, just to check you're all still with me, what is trust? What is trust? Uh, how would you define trust? You can put it in the chat box if you want to. Uh, just think about it if you don't, but what is trust? How would you define trust? Because so people talk about it so much. They're like, I want my donkey to trust me. Um, and it's really easy for us to kind of have those elements. We're all thinking about it. We're all getting, anybody want to unmute themselves and tell me what trust might be? Oh, you're a shy bunch. <laughs> um, okay, Dan's, Dan's given me calm and willing to try, ability to predict the behavior while I'm chase good, uh, belief that I have your back. These are all nice things, yeah. Trust to me is when an animal is relaxed, follow my lead and accept my soothing if it is worried. Okay, um, could, I, could I trust a human or a donkey to always do the wrong thing or to be overexcitable or to kick out or could I trust a donkey to bite me if I did the wrong thing? What I'm asking is could trust and the way we use the word, could it be a negative thing? Referring to behavior. Now we often say, you might with humans think, trust, I can trust you to be late. Trust them to always do that wrong. Trust them to um, behave in a way that's inappropriate, whatever it might be. <clears throat> so for me, trust is simply- it's good the, to, Go on, Chase, yeah. It's, it's good to know where you stand with people, even if it's a negative thing, at least you can then know how you're gonna respond because yeah. you know how they're going to respond because they're consistent. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's ex essentially where our hands put their predictable. Yeah, what we're talking about here is predictability. Trust is simply to uh, the ability to predict the behavior of another animal or person. And so if you want your animal to trust you, you need them to be able to predict your behavior. And if you're going to be inconsistent or erratic or becoming into the training with lots of different ideas because you've been on one of those internet forums and asked and they've changed what you're doing or you've been to a demonstration so many equines i see like oh no who have you been to see now um because we're changing what we're doing they can't predict our behavior so part of the a, a plan for shaping for uh, trust problem solving and confidence is that you're actually doing things together that allows you to predict the donkey's behavior and for them to predict your behavior and that will increase confidence. It doesn't happen just by doing it. I mean, it will, but it takes a lot longer. Whereas you should specifically work on it, especially with young animals or nervous animals, then you break it down um, and make something that's achievable. And finally, the one thing that often goes wrong is step number six is that um, people forget to enjoy the journey. You know, it's a really easy thing to say, but so easy to forget to enjoy the ups, the downs, the difficulties, the confusion, the bits when we're not sure we've lost our way in training, when it's we've overreached it and, it and the animal's kicked or it's gone backwards or all of those sorts of things. We have to enjoy all of those things and because that's the only way to keep moving forward and to enjoy it. So many people I see get equines and they get problems and then they're like, and you think, wow, that must be really enjoyable having donkeys and mules because you're really enjoying that journey. Um, no, it's fine. I really like them. 
Um, I just want to be, I'll be happy when we get everything fixed. And you want to avoid that. You want to come back to that relaxation. You want to come back to enjoying the journey because that will take everything else and make it much easier. So that's where we're kind of heading with those six steps. If you can get those six things right. So if you've got an issue, if you've fallen off the training wagon, if you can't find where the problem is, explore those six things first um, and see if any of those need improvement. Uh, and then if you've got all of those right and you've still got the issue, then you can move on to some of the more complicated things like variable schedules of reinforcement and stuff like that that will will be telling you why your animal maybe is doing what it's doing.